Welcome to this first video of the course uh, ChatGPT Opportunity and Challenge, uh, Challenge for Teaching. Uh, this first video is called Future Shock. I'm Marc Allier and this is the edition of August tw uh, 2023. Maybe most of the things that I say will not be true in a year or so. So let's start. Future Shock is a book is a book and is a concept by Abel Toffler. but let's ask ChatGTP to briefly explain the concept of future shock and its origin. We have here a description and an explication, but, but the idea is that the, the, piece, the pace of change in modern society, the technological induced change in, uh, in our society, it's not fast, but it's accelerating and every time it's accelerating faster. And this fast changes in the society is making difficult for people to cope with leading to feelings of confusion anxiety and even alienation uh, do you remember how the world was before i don't know the internet or smartphones or the cloud or uh, tv streaming or a lot of things that now we give for granted or social media uh, the world changes because we have new technologies and these technologies build up on each other. And right now we have a case of future shock, which is large language models. And the example, the, mo the most recent and more no most notary example of these large, large language models, this AI technology is ChatGTP. And now we're doing this course. Okay. So every uh, example and uh, snippet or uh, uh, screenshot that I post about uh, my interactions with ChatGPT in these slides will be accompanied with this uh, link like this and these links uh, will lead you to a web page where you can see all my interactions with uh, ChatGPT you can copy, paste it and even you can continue this conversation in your own account all my PDFs will be stored in my web page in this uh, address wasabi.se.upc.edu edu slash ludo slash courses and uh, you can get the PDFs and then you can click on the links and use it. So this is for your convenience. Let's see an example of future shock. Imagine that you are a student of engineering and you have to do some engineering problems right now. GPT-4 has the ability not only to generate and make up a lot of information that can be useful or not, because a lot of times it gets it wrong, is able to use plugins. And these plugins allows ChatGPT to connect to applications on the internet that do things for you and integrate the answers inside their response. Let's see an example of how it uses Wolfram Alpha. Wolfram Alpha is one of my favorite webs on the internet. It's, a, it's an, like a, an AI engine that allows, allows you to solve uh, or make uh, queries about mathematics, science and technology, society and culture, has a huge database and accesses open data and things about everyday life. So it's, it's a really useful tool and doesn't make things up. It's based on facts and a, a highly curated uh, information system. So I will ask ChatGTP to provide me with an example because I'm lazy that way. So I ask, uh, propose me a prompt which describes an engineering problem that can be solved by Wolfram Alpha and the solution includes a representation of a graph. And it's proposing me this problem about the optimal angle of launch of a projectile to uh, achieve uh, the maximum range of a flat uh, surface. So it's, it's like a, a parabolic throw problem. Okay, let's, uh, let's ask this to ChatGPT. I copy and paste it. You can have the whole chat here if, uh, if you want to access it. And now, we can see that it's uh, telling me about the equations of velocity uh, and the tightness of flight and everything. And at a certain point when it has to optimize, when it has to optimize the angle, instead of doing it itself, what it's doing, it's asking Wolfram Alpha. It's proposing this problem. Wolfram Alpha as an engine knows how to do it, is used by engineers, is accurate and 
it's uh, ChatGPT knows enough not to make it up, but to ask Wolfram Alpha. This box tells us that a conversation between ChatGPT and Wolfram Alpha has been uh, is being conducted, and now uh, it tells me things that Wolfram Alpha has responded to ChatGPT, and now is going to plot the range of the projectile. So it's going to draw a draft and asks Wolfram Alpha to do so. And finally, this is the diagram provided by Wolfram Alpha inserted in the answer of ChatGPT. So I'm a, an engineering student. And right now, I, I, if I can ask the proper prompt, I not only have the ability of ChatGPT to generate information, but to use ChatGPT as a tool to access Wolfram Alpha. Why? Because Wolfram Alpha is a great tool, but, uh, but you need to know how to use it. And ChatGPT knows how to use it. And I can then access the, I can expand these boxes and I can see what is the query that uh, ChatGPT has asked Wolfram Alpha and all the answers. And then I can go directly to Wolfram Alpha and I can ask this question and I can go nuts and do things and look at step-by-step -step solutions and other things in Wolfram Alpha. So if I'm a, an engineering student or an engineer, I can do a lot of things and make sure that the answer is right. And this is a new way to do things. And it's, I don't need to learn how to work with Wolfram Alpha. ChatGPT knows how to do it for me. I just need to make sure that the answers are correct and have strategies to verify. I know a little bit about the domain, uh, domain uh, that I'm talking about. So this is future shock. This is how engineers are going to be working from now on in this way and in other ways. So this presents a lot of challenges and opportunities. And for a teacher, for a professor, for a lecturer, uh, what are the challenges? I have been working for the last seven, eight months with a lot of professors, lecturers, teachers uh, in Spain. And we have agreed that these are the, the most important challenges. First, first of all, uh, we need to know to what extent these tools are capable and accurate. Uh, and what they can do and how accurate they are when when they um, when they um, they make mistakes and if they and this mistake uh, and how can we detect these mistakes and this is something that we need to solve in general and in our knowledge domain in our specialty if I'm an engineer an engineer if I'm into mechanical engineering how does this apply to my specialty in mechanical engineering if I'm a chemist how it applies to chemistry if I'm working in ethics how it's applied to ethics and how to uh, solve ethical dilemmas then how do we take the maximum advantage to help improve the quality of our work not only our productivity, but how to do better work. How can we do better work with these tools? I think it's possible and uh, that these tools are great to make better work if we know how to do it. Then how is going to affect this to our teaching process? Okay, then, then we have to think about it. Can we use these tools to be make better class notes? Can we, can we use these tools to um, make more, engage, uh, more engaging class notes, more engaging exercises to correct, uh, the, to, to correct the, the, the assignments that we give to provide better feedback to, the, to our students? There's a lot of things that we can do. And then if we are one of our students, how this is going to affect our learning pro process. Can we, as a student, ask better questions to understand better what we need to understand? Or we just, or, or there's a challenge here and there's the temptation, there's always a temptation to make that ChatGPT and Wolfram Alpha and other tools do our homework for us without passing through our brains. And this is a challenge because nobody's going to, um, um, let me correct this. Uh, uh, it's a challenge because no nobody is going to learn. And then how is this going to affect the process where how we assess students? 
uh, are we going to mistrust our students because they can use uh, these tools and they're not going to learn? Are we going to be the policemen of our students? How does this work? How our relationship to our students is going to change if any, how w are we going to have to plan the courses in a different way? All of these are questions that we have to deal with. Uh, I will try to explain some things in the videos and for sure in the presential lessons or in the video conferences that we'll do with the students, we will talk about this. And that's it for this video. Thank you for listening.